This is our first podcast of our new unit. We're on our new packet, number 10, and we're going to start looking at the energy that is involved with the reactions. So this is going to be short and sweet and just trying to get some of the words down in your packet to go back and look at that we looked at today after the test. So system and surroundings. That was what the activity looked at. So the system What's important to you know is the system is the chemical reaction. We cannot measure the system directly. We take all of our measurements in the surroundings. So the surroundings is everything else. The system is the chemical reactions. Now the problem is when we talk about a heat, we're talking about the heat of the system. So a lot of times in the heat of the system, what we see in the surroundings is the opposite then of what, you're, of what is going on in the system. So this first law of thermodynamics, it says that the total energy of a system and its surroundings remains constant. And that's what we were trying to get you to see in the little activity with beans. This is again, chemistry is difficult and it's challenging to try to see what's going on so that's why we use these different models and so by using just beans to represent the energy what we wanted you to understand is that you were just energy was being moved from the system to the surrounding but you weren't seeing a loss of the energy it was just being transferred now what we will see is that you get a transfer of energy now sometimes you might lose some in sound um, friction or different ways but that total energy is always conserved so look at down here at the bottom this is what it's saying the first law of thermodynamics is saying that energy is conserved which means the energy of the, the surrounding and the system will always equal the total energy okay our focus a lot is to put another definition to it and that's exothermic and endothermic so let's look at this. When the system, the system itself is losing energy. So when the su system is losing energy, look at what's going to happen to the surroundings. So the surroundings is going to fill this energy. So you're going to see an increase of energy in the system. The decrease, excuse me, a decrease of energy in the system. The increase happens in the surroundings. Therefore, the temperature will go up okay couple things different people different ways that I've heard over the years exo this is exiting now nah, it looks like excited let me try this again exiting okay the energy is exiting the system so you're gonna find some ways to um, help remember for yourself what you need to know it's a negative energy. What we do, we give the sign negative. It's still a positive quantity of energy. But if you're ever keeping your books or trying to track your budget and you spend some money, so let's say you have $100. You go down the store, you spend $10 at Starbucks. So you subtract the money even though it was a positive quantity of money, you spent that money, it exited your wallet, so it is now gone, but it was still $10, but the negative sign just represents that it was given off or you lost it or it was released from you. That's the same thing in chemistry. A negative sign means it has exited the system, gone into the surroundings, the surroundings will get warmer and the temperature will go up. Okay, then we have the opposite. Sometimes this system needs energy to react. It has to take energy to break the bonds. So what happens is it's going to steal the energy. So look what it's doing. It's taking the energy. So the surroundings loses. The system is gaining because the system needs this energy. So what happens to the surrounding? You are seeing the lack of heat. So therefore, temperature goes down in an endothermic reaction. So other things I've seen that if exothermic was exiting, endothermic was going 
in. It was going into the system. So whatever kind of helps you to be able to know the difference between it. And notice the sign, since you're adding it to the system, it's why it's a positive energy. The energy is being added to the system versus exothermic where it's being released. So what we do and what we care about is called an enthalpy. Okay, enthalpy is H. Why is it H? I don't know. Think of H as heat. So it's the heat. Enthalpy is the heat of the reaction. Okay, in science, in a lot of places, we get tired of writing things. We have shortcuts. So whenever you see this triangle, triangle means delta. Delta means change. Oops, sorry, the dogs are getting away. Delta means change. So a change in an enthalpy, <gasps> change in, shh, panda. The change in the history is the difference between the sum of, okay, this is really important. It's the products minus the reactants. So delta H is the difference between how much heat you had at the end <gasps> minus the enthalpy of reactants. Okay, this in sentence, this is what you can use in an equation. Delta H, okay, Greek, this means sum for math of, again, this means heat of the products minus, same thing, sum, that's a sum of the heat of the reactants. So it's always products minus reactants, which means you are reading it backwards when you're doing this. Products minus reactants. So the rest of this unit, we're actually going to find different ways to calculate delta H. At the end, we're going to have one, two, three, four different ways we can calculate delta H. What are we going to have? Kind of foreshadowing. We have Hess's law. That's going to be way number one. We're going to use um, heats of formations, they're called. That's going to be heat number two. We can use good old-fashioned stoichiometry, which I know is going to make you happy. And then we can use energy diagrams. So what we're going to find is we have multiple ways to actually find out the same substance, the same property, and it's going to be the delta H, heat of reaction, product, products minus reactants. So when you come back to class, we're going to be looking at the first two ways to be able to calculate that energy. Have a great day.